Shall we start? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Uh, good evening to all. Uh, this is um, Anil Baliga from uh, uh, Indian Concrete Institute of Mangalore Center. Uh, this will be uh, the greatest uh, you know, uh, activity of the uh, present uh, times, wherein uh, we have uh, uh, support from great uh, organization like Qcrete Redimix Concrete Company wherein uh, uh, the knowledge uh, has been uh, you know uh, uh, given away from various uh, uh, speakers and uh, we would like to uh, welcome you all to this uh, great uh, uh, one more uh, lecture of the series that is uh, uh, series lecture series number 42 and uh, today uh, on behalf of uh, Indian Concrete Institute, Mangaluru Center, as well as uh, on behalf of uh, Qcrete Redimix uh, India Private Limited, I welcome all the participants and uh, at the same time, the resource person, the speaker for the day, uh, none other than uh, our own um, Kaushika sir, and uh, he is going to uh, address uh, on his pet subject on concrete. and. Uh, at the same time, uh, I take this privilege to uh, introduce him. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, I had a great uh, working experience uh, as a uh, colleague in RMC India. Uh, but still, uh, as a part of the formality, uh, I would like to introduce him uh, formally. Uh, we are Kaushika. Uh, he's a, a civil engineering graduate from uh, PES College, uh, Engineering College, Mandya. Then uh, he did his uh, master's and also he got the uh, specialist. Uh, uh, you know, he worked with uh, many, many organizations and uh, he went on uh, acquiring uh, the experiences across the, uh, I should say, globe because uh, his. Uh, 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 experiences run uh, over the uh, nations. So uh, he was uh, 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 he has worked in uh, uh, Saudi Arabia and uh, he has worked in Oman. Uh, uh, he has worked, uh, of course, in India uh, with uh, different uh, organizations and um, with RMC India he has uh, uh, done a couple of uh, you know. Uh, uh, special concretes uh, which were done for uh, the first times and uh, uh, right now he's um, adding the uh, technical team as a director of marketing and technical uh, of uh, Qcrete uh, uh, Redimix uh, India Private Limited uh, sorry he is the executive director sorry I'm sorry and uh, uh, he's a good uh, uh, orator and uh, more than that, he is a very nice human being. Uh, without wasting uh, uh, time, uh, glad to uh, see Kaushika sir once again uh, uh, presenting uh, his pet subject uh, uh, um, to this August uh, gathering. So, uh, welcome uh, uh, Kaushika sir to this uh, evening. And uh, now the stage is to you, sir. Thank you so much. <coughs> Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot uh, for this uh, uh, warm welcome uh, to this uh, webinar today. And uh, I'm speaking on behalf of uh, Qcrete uh, Redimix India Private Limited. And uh, just I will go through uh, my presentation. Uh, just a minute. There is some <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> the topic today is uh, sustainable concrete and uh, what is the contribution by the concrete industry um, uh, can you all see anjali madam can the screen uh, screen be seen now hello yes, yes, sir, yes. 
Yeah. Now, the first word we talk about is uh, in this uh, particular session is uh, widely used actually. Uh, nowadays, uh, uh, everybody, uh, most of the civil engineers and everybody, not only civil engineers, others speak, uh, people are talking about sustainability. You know, <clears throat> in simple words, uh, you know, because of the corona and all, everybody talks about whether the business is sustainable, means whether we can uh, survive with the business, continue with the particular business. This word has become uh, more popular uh, during the corona time. And uh, what sustainability actually means is uh, meeting our own needs without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. In addition to natural resources, we also need social and economical resources. So here, uh, sustainability in broader terms uh, is talking about whatever product we manufacture, whatever we manufacture today, whatever we do today, uh, it should not disturb the environment. It should not disturb uh, the way it is uh, uh, available, made available to the future generation. And also, uh, it also talks about the utilization of natural resources. So the three principles are interwoven. Uh, that is uh, the need, how we have to meet our need with the uh, proper utilization of natural resources and also without uh, uh, disturbing the economic uh, fabric i mean to say it should not be any product that you make should also not be uh, very costly and it should not be made unavailable for future generation that is a broad definition of uh, uh, sustainability so <clears throat> Um, these are uh, uh, people who have written written a lot of uh, articles. Uh, they say uh, they are said to be uh, semantic scholars, uh, where, where they they talk about uh, broadly the definition of uh, the um, sustainability. Again, uh, they have made this report called Brundtland uh, report, where uh, they talk about uh, the sustainable development that meets the needs and aspirations of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. So again, it is talking about the uh, utilization and organizing the uh, present resources, limited resources, how we are going to use this in future uh, without disturbing the environment. That is the uh, principle of uh, sustainability. Well, the most interesting uh, and I can say one of the most uh, beautiful explanations are uh, the, the uh, what do you call, uh, you, can, you can say a kind of a definition. He comes from an American uh, proverb where they talk about treat the earth well. We do not inherit the earth from our ancestors. We borrow it from our children. So uh, this, it is one of the wonderful statements on sustainable developments and uh, at this juncture where uh, we are building cities uh, colonies and we are occupying uh, every new corner of the world including uh, the vegetation uh, uh, forests encroaching uh, the the um, uh, even protected areas encroaching lakes etc this, this uh, uh, american indian proverb uh, defines properly what is sustainable development and we should be uh, mindful of this and uh, uh, we we always uh, uh, probably uh, do not uh, refer much to our own text actually uh, our own uh, culture uh, in india i'm talking about where uh, old Indian texts uh, written probably um, undated or say 5,000 years back, they talk about sustainability in a different way. Um, and uh, it is astonishing that uh, people 5,000 years back had understood um, sustainability in such a um, deep way. And uh, they had learned to live in harmony with the nature. 
So these statements read as follows. Uh, do not cut trees because they remove pollution. Do not disturb the sky and do not pollute the atmosphere. Let what I dig from the o earth rapidly spring and grow again. Oh, purifier, let me not pierce through your vitals or your heart. So in some of these prayers, some of the, uh, the uh, worships or some of the texts uh, that we see written 5,000 years back, such uh, uh, wonderful uh, statements have been made, uh, which uh, clearly emphasizes uh, human beings living in complete and perfect harmony with the nature without disturbing the nature. Sustainability is important for many reasons, including environmental quality. In order to have healthy communities, we need clean air, natural resources, and a non-toxic environment. For example, many health issues are directly related to air and water quality. Uh, if you look at the pollution levels uh, in India, uh, we should not talk much negative in this situation. Uh, means I'm not interested in talking uh, negative things, but you know, the air quality has of late been a uh, question mark and uh, a lot of uh, toxicity uh, has gone to disturbing levels and having a very huge impact on the health of uh, the um, people in this country. And of course, uh, in this country, other countries are also there, but I'm basically talking about this kind of India where the pollution levels are um, in a very dangerously above the uh, required norms and uh, and you know we have all kinds of uh, uh, problems and uh, i can say in this uh, pandemic it is a miracle that uh, we are not affected uh, because uh, the the air quality has been a question mark and when this air quality is a question mark and the virus is also affecting the uh, attacking the lungs. Uh, the the attack is double hold or uh, many fold. So it is a miracle that uh, India has gone through, and we have, we have almost sailed through this uh, unscathed, not uh, in a very big way. Uh, so it is very important that uh, we maintain and we take cognizance of the quality of air, quality of water, everything, uh, whatever we uh, we are surrounded with and that is what the sustainability is all about actually <clears throat> so sustainability development has uh, uh, two key aspect concepts meeting the essential needs of the world's inhabitants recognizing recognizing the limitations of technology and society's ability to meet the present and future needs so sustainable development before we go into concrete section, I'm just briefing about uh, these points actually. So sustainable development is more than these. Land usage is very important. Uh, water usage, you know, uh, across the globe, we have uh, only 4% of uh, potable drinkable water uh, fit for uh, mm, consumption of um, mm, not only human beings, other beings also. Uh, many of the species uh, depend on this 4% and this 4% is uh, not completely available. Some of this is locked in glaciers, some of this is uh, locked in different lakes and are not completely available. In spite of that, uh, we don't care about the usage of water and uh, it is going to be catastrophic if we continue in the same way. Judicious usage of material resources for all activities including construction is important. Indoor environment uh, means how we maintain the indoor uh, air quality, uh, giving uh, um, sufficient um, ventilation and space for air to move from uh, one place to another. If we lock everywhere and don't have good circulation, then you have a problem and the uh, quality of air inside the premises will be uh, completely um, disturbed. And we are coming to uh, moving towards uh, before we move to concrete, uh, we talk about a uh, little bit about the greenhouse effect, actually, which is very important because carbon dioxide is involved in this, actually. So we know uh, and, uh, you know, uh, even the high school children know what is greenhouse effect. Uh, the uh, sun radi uh, radiation travels towards Earth and then uh, about half of it is uh, reflected, absorbed by clouds. 
and the atmosphere and uh, and the rest reaches the earth where it is absorbed by oceans and land the earth also releases heat back towards space and some of this heat passes directly through the atmosphere but most of it is captured and retained by greenhouse gases this is the point actually this is the important point of discussion here most of it is trapped actually it means uh, the greenhouse gases trap it uh, and will not allow the heat to uh, escape out of the atmosphere and then uh, probably re uh, reflects back <clears throat> and then heat build up takes place and the global warm warming takes place the uh, planet becomes hotter because of the this phenomenon which is called as <clears throat> greenhouse gas effect and uh, you can see in this list several gases and uh, carbon dioxide is one of the major uh, um, the uh, gases here and we have other gases also methane uh, and nitrous oxide etc but uh, the carbon dioxide is one of the major gases which comes from fossil fuels and most importantly for us today's discussion cement production uh, is one of the major elements which gives uh, uh, the way for uh, the carbon dioxide and if we take this as uh, global warming potential global warming potential uh, you can see the other gases are higher and higher in the global warming potential but but we can see here uh, the list of gases which are causing the greenhouse gas effect and uh, carbon dioxide uh, is a one of the major contributors because it occupies means many many several cubic meters and several miles and miles and kilometers of the atmosphere since uh, <clears throat> 1750 atmospheric concentrations of carbon dioxide methane and nitrous oxide increased by huge percentages like 147 to 59 and 123 percentage and uh, respectively and uh, that are unprecedented in the past uh, 8 lakh years uh, i don't know how the scientists have gone back to the level of 8 lakh years and calculated this they should have applied some uh, proper methods i'm sure uh, but here the important point is there is a huge jump in the concentration of all these uh, gases uh, in the atmosphere thanks to the uh, industrial revolution and uh, the other human activities before the industrial revolution the concentration of carbon dioxide remained around 280 parts per million by volume in March 2020, the global monthly average concentration increased to 413, which is about 3 ppm higher than 2019. So uh, you can see from 280 to 413, uh, it has gone uh, in a very you know, short time of the human uh, civilization, uh, <clears throat> which is causing all sorts of problems. So, so here we can see what is the uh, problem? What is the problem with this kind of thing? If the, uh, if the carbon dioxide level goes up, what is the problem? You have global warming. What is global warming? It is a gradual increase in the uh, temperature. And global warming is uh, the increase in average temperature of the Earth's atmosphere and oceans as a result of the buildup of greenhouse gases. In our atmosphere, global warming is sometimes called climate change. Greenhouse gases can either be released by natural events such as volcanic eruptions or human activities such as deforestation, burning fossil fuels to manufacture products. Power our cars and tracks or to create the energy to heat and cool the homes we live in. And the chlorofluorocarbons in refrigeration systems are other sources of greenhouse gases resulting in human activities. So, the point is, it will lead to hotter days, rising uh, sea levels, more frequent and intense extreme weather events, oceans are warming and acidifying, and all this uh, will uh, make uh, almost uh, uh, the uh, entire planet unlivable in a short time. They are expecting in 2050, 
2040-50, uh, many of the um, the coastal areas in India, especially, uh, will be completely drowned if the same carbon dioxide emissions and greenhouse gases emissions continue because the sea levels are going to go up actually. So even 0.5 centigrade uh, higher temperature above the mean temperature across the globe, one, one, uh, one degrees, 1 1.5 degrees will cause havoc across the globe actually. So, coming back to uh, cement, we before we go on to our Demix concrete and uh, what has happened in Demix concrete, cement is the source of about 8% of the world's carbon dioxide emissions, um, which is uh, a very, very huge uh, contribution in terms of uh, uh, spewing up NMS gases uh, like carbon dioxide. If the cement industry were a country, it would be the third largest emitter in the world behind China and US. So that is the, uh, you can say, the, you can say uh, the, the uh, problem, the huge problem what we are facing today. It, it is third, if it is a country, if you consider this as a country, it will be the third largest in, uh, carbon dioxide emitter. It contributes more than CO2 than aviation fuel, and is not far behind the global agricultural business, which is 12%. So cement industry is uh, really, uh, to a great extent, playing havoc with the uh, atmosphere. <clears throat> so these are some pictures which show, uh, uh, obviously, China is uh, everywhere uh, in number one position. You take uh, meat production, you take uh, aquaculture you take anything uh, chinese or occupying the uh, one position and also in, as far as spoiling the atmosphere also they are in a very um, big position uh, because china produces opc in big quantities cement production is maximum in china and you have here uh, the thread mark here which shows uh, <clears throat> huge amount of uh, carbon dioxide being thrown into the atmosphere by uh, China and uh, other countries. If you, if you look at other countries, uh, they are <clears throat> nowhere comparable in this picture. <clears throat> now, it is observably essential to reduce greenhouse gases and in particular uh, CO2 uh, because, you know, we cannot continue to live uh, in the same way as we are living if uh, the the greenhouse gas emissions continue uncontrolled in the uncontrolled way it is happening now. Now, what is the environmental impact of extraction of different materials? You take uh, steel, you take wood and concrete. Some people are really happy to use wood, actually. Okay, wood is good in some countries, but I'm, uh, if we talk about India, uh, uh, since we have lesser forest coverage when compared to our population, wood has to be used uh, judiciously and the impact is high. And in that way, concrete uh, fares better. You can see here also the carbon dioxide emissions during manufacturing of different materials. In this table also you can see aluminum is at top, steel is uh, not far behind, uh, plastic and steel are at similar levels as far as the carbon dioxide emissions per kg of building material is concerned and concrete almost is at bottom actually, concrete is at, a, at bottom and hence uh, you can say uh, concrete is a better material when compared to other building materials. So, what is sustainable concrete? Before we move on to ready mix contribution of ready mix concrete, we let us see what is uh, sustainable concrete. Sustainable concrete is defined as concrete that uses less energy in its production and produces less carbon dioxide than normal concrete. It is also known as green concrete and 
eco-friendly country. Um, so we have moved to understand a little bit about uh, sustainability and then to sustainable, uh, sustainable concrete and impact of different materials. And we have other thing also to understand here, embodied carbon. Embodied carbon is that consists of all the greenhouse gas emissions associated with building construction, including those that arise from extracting, transporting, manufacturing, and installing building materials on site, as well as the operational and end of life emissions associated with these metals. So from starting to end, complete life cycle of a product, how much carbon dioxide is utilized, to manufacture, extract, transport, and during its lifetime, how much it is used, everything is referred to as the embodied carbon. Uh, and uh, this is a very important indicator to tell whether a particular material has been manufactured in a eco-friendly, green, responsible way, or the manufacturer is not bothered about these things. Of late, we can confidently say Redimix companies have absorbed many technologies. Starting from 1995 onwards, actually, once the Redimix companies came to India. So there were two, three phases which we can list, actually. The initial phase of Redimix companies in India where uh, the the companies redimix companies were trying to put across to the customers the concept of redimix concrete and they were to tell they were trying to tell the uh, customers how this uh, concrete is better uh, for the customers to use against the uh, already existing site mix concrete that was the you can say phase one and then uh, phase two is uh, that uh, a, a growing stage where a lot of ready-mix companies uh, came, different corporates came into market and then growth stage started. And then the, uh, the uh, third is uh, where a uh, lot of innovative materials and innovative technologies were absorbed. Like in the first phase uh, itself, uh, the, when, when the ready-mix concrete came into uh, existence in India. It was also uh, peaking uh, with the usage of uh, admixtures, concrete admixtures. And uh, in India, uh, you can say between 1980 to 1990, uh, there was a stage where uh, admixtures have to be uh, sold um, with a lot of difficulty actually. It means we need to go and tell to the customers how admixtures uh, uh, help the concrete to be used. Now with the advent of Redimix concrete in India, so most of the Redimix uh, companies started using and absorbing this uh, different uh, admixture technologies. And this was uh, merged with the uh, first phase of uh, the uh, growth of Redimix companies. So <clears throat> one of the major changes uh, which took place uh, with the advent of uh, the uh, mechanization of uh, concrete production with the advent of Redimix uh, concrete industry is uh, the cement content, impact on cement content. So cement content was uh, earlier uh, specified also, used also, uh, like say for example, one, two, four, one, 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 three, one, two, four was about uh, six bag uh, mix actually, and one, 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 three was about eight bag mix actually. Now, if you look at the uh, earlier 400 kg mix, now it is becoming, now uh, a, a, the same M25 mix, which was uh, done with one, one and a half, three. Now we are doing almost M40 mix with uh, 400 kg cement content. So this is the uh, improvement, which is a contribution you can say from the ready mix concrete industry in India. So the automation and the computerized batching plants uh, shifted the thinking of volumetric batching to uh, Y batching and this Y batching uh, resulted in very good uh, reductions in cement content. Of course, uh, the usage of uh, superplastic 
initially SNF. Now VC have helped in containing the uh, cement country. And this itself is a, a sustainable shift from the earlier uh, way batching. And we know uh, very well why we should not use more OPC content. Uh, no point in using more OPC content because we know that as we are increasing the cement content after a particular point, no matter what cement content you put, the uh, strength will not increase. The strength is governed by water cement ratio. Uh, and uh, you know you have this uh, water cement ratio law which says the uh, strength and durability of concrete is inversely proportional to the water cement ratio. If the water cement ratio is more, strength is less. This is what we know and hence there is no point in putting the more cement content. And then you have the uh, OPC content if it is more, it leads to more uh, thermal cracks because the heat buildup will take place inside the body of concrete and uh, you have uh, these thermal cracks if the cement content is more. So it is prudent to keep the cement content as less as possible. Fourth point, the, uh, you can say uh, the only unnatural material or the synthetic material or the chemical which is available in the body of concrete is uh, cement. All other materials are natural. The unnatural or the synthetic man-made product cement tries to undergo its changes and it will be uh, it will be assisted or helped by outside agencies like sulfates chlorides and water oxygen etc where the carbon dioxide etc to to make it take back this material again to uh, its original form which is uh, limestone so cement has a tendency to go back to its natural state. Each material in this world has a, has a tendency to be in its natural state. So cement being an unnatural or man-made product tends to go back to its natural state. And hence, if we keep a control on the cement content, you have a durable, maintainable, sustainable concrete. So the shift from uh, site mix concrete to a demix concrete has also helped in this. So water content much lower when you are when you are talking about uh, redmix concrete uh, since we use uh, chemical admixtures and since rmc industry has embraced latest generation of admixtures the water reduction available is about 20 percent to 40 percent 20 percent in the case of uh, uh, simple uh, super plastic sizes and we have the latest admixtures PC based admixtures which give about 40% reduction. So earlier unheard of uh, water cement ratios like 0 0.23, 0 0.24 can be easily achieved thanks to these uh, admixtures and redmix concretes have embraced these uh, uh, admixtures for making very easy, uh, very easy, um, easily placeable, um, pumpable uh, concretes uh, which can also lead to faster construction. So, redmix uh, concrete has also helped to reduce the amount of water usage in per cubic meter basis. So, we have started using uh, water in a very judicious, ways, uh, judicious way thanks to redmix concrete industry. RMG industry also uses recycled water, waste water uh, after concreting for many useful activities including production of concrete. Many concrete companies uh, use uh, based on the, the based on the quality of uh, or recycled or recycled water 25 percent 50 percent sometimes slightly higher percentage also uh, of this uh, recycled water for making um, uh, concrete actually and uh, none of the uh, recycled water is wasted not uh, even a single kg of uh, recycled water is you, uh, wasted. It is used for some purpose or the other, including cleaning in a redmix plant. So <clears throat> the other contribution of uh, uh, redmix companies is to absorb technologies, very good technologies like self-compacting concrete, where once the self-compacting concrete, this concept came uh, uh, in 1986 by Okomara. And once it came into existence, after that, uh, Redmix companies have uh, taken this and started using it actually. So here, you know the advantages are many. 
the energy consumption by uh, vibration for vibrating is less actually number of people is uh, less actually and you have pushed the concrete to higher durability because you are using scms and uh, you are making thinner sections you can do architecturally uh, better concrete all these benefits have been incorporated in uh, self compacting concrete and redmix companies have embraced this and uh, redmix concrete companies <clears throat> also have started using scms in a uh, very big way if you look at uh, the uh, growth of uh, ready mix concrete industry in india there was a stage in 2000 around 2000 where uh, some companies uh, were hesitant to use uh, fly ash uh, and uh, they were not uh, trying to educate the customers uh, around uh, you can say in, in the 2000 and in this at this period uh, the, uh, many companies uh, uh, took a lot of uh, positive steps actually and uh, I was involved in uh, the uh, trials of fly ashes from throughout India from different thermal power plants and we proved uh, to uh, the customers that the fly ash available in India from different thermal power plants except one or two can be used successfully for most of the grades of uh, concrete especially water um, in the I maximum used grades which is m15 20 25 30 uh, up to say 35 40 not a problem we proved and then we also told these customers that small inconsistencies which creep up because of the unprocessed fly ash can be handled by proper mix design and control of water cement ratio so at this stage the ready mix companies took a very positive step of embracing the uh, SCMs and uh, you know SCMs um, significantly increase the durability because of the secondary hydration process that they uh, involve uh, increasing the um, resistance to chloride sulfates and then uh, many other properties are uh, improved like cohesion pumpability finishability placeability and uh, the other properties like uh, shrinkage, drying shrinkage creep and all are almost comparable. Carbonation is comparable. So SCMs proved uh, their worth uh, and Redimix companies started using uh, uh, this initially thinking that uh, they can save some money using these materials, but ultimately uh, the quality of concrete given by Redimix companies improved because of blending of these materials. So uh, in the, if you look at the current mixes in India, if you look at the current mixes uh, in India, you have, you have M20, 300, 325, uh, 320 is uh, M25, and you have uh, OPC GG BS mixes like this. And, you have OPC fly ash mixes like this. So 20, 25 years ago, this was a difficult to think. This was a difficult um, point to think actually, uh, because nobody thought 20 years ago that uh, most of the mixes, uh, millions of cubic meters of concrete will be produced with the blended concrete on, on the, uh, on the uh, ready mix plants and uh, better concrete are produced. This uh, was not uh, uh, thought actually. As we said earlier, Redimix concrete has also successfully adopted SCC. We, have, we, we see in many sites now uh, going for SCC because of the advantages that they have seen. And these kind of uh, uh, congested reinforcement areas can be easily uh, uh, achieved by using SCC. and uh, you can you can you can have uh, these artistic surfaces and uh, extraordinary designs uh, thin sections can be achieved by properly uh, proper design of uh, concrete scc concrete and uh, pumping the concrete to different uh, elements 
and uh, coming back to uh, the some of the latest efforts uh, what we have done uh, in india um, uh, it is not uh, to talk about something like a um, marketing or advertisement uh, but here uh, we have found uh, a novel additive which has started making waves in redmix concrete industry the product is called icrete uh, and it increases the strength reduces uh, permeability and hence increases the durability make mixes economical and hence greener concrete it is also a waterproofing compound and uh, some of the uh, mixes uh, that we have seen here is you can see when icrete is used at uh, uh, about uh, two percent uh, at higher grades you, it matches with the uh, reference uh, concrete actually reference concrete uh, or the control concrete and you have here uh, other mix uh, which is uh, which is uh, normal grades you can take here uh, opc 140 160 ggbs and uh, 2.1 kg that is 0.7 kg 0.7 percent of uh, this product and our additive called icrete uh, you can get uh, uh, M25 actually. So here you are not only uh, saving the uh, cement content or cementitious content and making durable concrete, sustainable concrete, but also you are making a uh, getting an increased strength, uh, but waterproof the concrete, durability is more. So this is a shift in the way uh, the concrete is done. So Redmix companies are using this uh, uh, to make uh, better concrete, actually sustainable concrete. So similarly, we can see here also. Uh, you can see at about two percent of uh, um, the percentage, you can see the twenty-eight day strength, uh, which is uh, uh, good strength actually. And you can see here uh, when we are using control four fifty plus one twenty, we have reduced the OPC content, increased the GGPS content to make uh, this concrete. Okay, with a 2% of this additive. So I'll come back uh, to the usage again. You can have another trial where we have done this uh, uh, comparison. Okay, where uh, OPC 160, 160, uh, OPC GGB is 140, 140. You can see the increase in water cement ratio. In spite of an increase in water cement ratio, 0.5 to 0.57, you have got uh, strength, comparable strength actually. So. Reduction in cement content. Reduction in cement content means simply it means that you are you are discouraging the usage of OPC or you are discouraging the usage of more cement in the body of concrete and you are trying to push the concrete towards a better concrete, durable concrete and greener concrete. So Redmix companies are really using this kind of innovative technologies uh, in many ways to uh, contribute uh, either directly or indirectly to this uh, sustainable concrete. And we have uh, the, these uh, tables uh, which uh, talk about uh, the uh, reference here. Portland cement is uh, taken as a uh, cradle to factory from at the factory. It takes uh, 913 as the embodied carbon dioxide per ton. And uh, if we go to the next table actually here, you can, why I'm showing this table is when we are blending, let us say, at a redemix plant, uh, 21 to 35% of uh, fly ash with uh, uh, cement, with cement, you have, uh, you have, let us say, 722 as the embodied carbon dioxide. And uh, when you are blending uh, 21 to 35% of uh, GGPS, which is about 735, when compared to the control of 913. So from 913, you go to this one, and here you are coming to such levels as 354 and 5413. That is when you are blending 36 to 55% of lay ash. Of course, in Indian standard, it is not applicable. We can blend up to 35%. Even up 35% blending of lay ash. Okay, you can see 586 and 608 compared to uh, original, which is 913 embodied carbon dioxide of course but to these tables we have to add the carbon dioxide emissions uh, which happens to the transportation at the transportation means this is at the plant level actually so 
you have to add further carbon dioxide what happens maybe 10 kgs 15 kgs a lot of calculations are there it is complex so i will not go through those things now at this point of time i'm just telling you that the scms are simply extraordinary materials which have contributed significantly to make a greener country and the dimix companies the dimix concrete industry in india have absorbed these technologies and uh, have been using and producing uh, millions of uh, cubic meters of concrete and if you this is a reference from another country actually where we are talking about uh, gu means a general purpose cement uh, this uh, this is a canadian uh, um, table from canada where uh, uh, this reference says that actually uh, 35 average benchmark means uh, 35 mpa concrete average benchmark is 417 and when we are talking about 35 35 to 50 percent of slag cement if you are using uh, about 50 percent or 35 to 50 percent of slag cement or ggbs you are adding you are bringing down to 318 and 329 and then if you are adding 30 to 40 percent of fly ash, you are going to bring it down to 353. And uh, there are other cements like uh, limestone filler cement, they are represented by L, where it will go down if you are using this that kind of cement up to 260, means uh, almost uh, 40 45 percent uh, reduction in the carbon dioxide emissions or the global warming potential gwp is global warming potential so this is a very uh, beautiful way of uh, managing your business managing the uh, usage of a good available technology for reduction of carbon dioxide and making uh, making a very positive impact on the environment <clears throat> another important point which we can uh, talk about here is let us say we are producing m25 concrete with opc ggbs at 50 50 if you produce 100 meter cube and use such a concrete this is said to be equal equivalent to growing 308 trees for 10 years or absorbing about uh, 12 tons of uh, carbon or not driving car for almost a lack of kilometers so a ready mix company by incorporating this kind of material uh, ggbs flyage and all is making such a positive statement on the environment and uh, in india we are also moving slowly if not uh, steadily towards uh, from the prescriptive approach of specifying the mixes somebody is telling 15 percent somebody telling no i want opc uh, somebody telling I want only 10% of lay ash when the IS code says minimum you can use is 15% of lay ash. Somebody comes and says I want only I will allow only 10%. Uh, everything is okay. I'm happy to hear all these uh, contributions, but uh, my building has to be OPC. All these talks we hear in India uh, sometimes, uh, but I'm sure. Uh, the scenario is almost changing uh, it has changed uh, in a very big way thanks to the redmix concrete industry uh, redmix concrete industry have started using um, in many ways many grades so for example you take uh, m70 m80 whatever grade of concrete earlier uh, only it uh, m, uh, was done with opc plus uh, micro silica now all these concretes we are attempting with opc plus uh, SCM like GGBS or Flayage with uh, a material like microsilica or such uh, comparable materials. So, a um, big change has happened in the last uh, 20 years, and in the last 20 years, uh, most of the uh, um, progressive redmix companies, with the help of uh, progressive uh, consultants and specifiers, have contributed significantly towards making greener concrete and better concrete. So Redmix concrete industry has made a sea change in the way concrete is produced, used in India, across the world. Um, 
India and also across the world. It has contributed significantly in using bundle of technologies in conjunction with each other to make concrete better and sustainable. So, <clears throat> with this, uh, with this, uh, I'm concluding uh, uh, this uh, presentation. And any questions can be asked now. And if there are uh, more questions, you can send uh, the questions to uh, my email ID. <clears throat> uh, Anjali, madam, you can take the questions now. Uh, sir, what is the difference between a retaining wall and a boundary wall? That is one of the. <clears throat> uh, uh okay uh i hope uh, the, the better the question be concerned with the subject actually i'm happy if the question is related to the subject that you're talking actually but the answer uh, to this question is in the in the in the uh, question itself boundary wall is a, a, a marking a, material, a, a wall constructed for marking uh, a boundary and retaining wall is uh, a wall designed to retain something, uh, retain, retaining of, for example, you have some earth or some uh, materials stocked on the other side, and uh, the, on this side you have a building coming up, and the entire uh, concrete wall has to support the other uh, um, material, which is usually earth on the other side. That is the retaining wall. Yeah. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, sir, we have only got this question for now. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. We have a question asked by Sumanta Sahu. And the, uh, the question goes like this. Uh, how to ensure quality of GGBS received at the site? Uh, see, uh, the uh, GGBS, uh, you know, definitely comes from... Uh, uh, good reputed manufacturers uh, in uh, India and uh, most importantly the quality of GGBS is uh, uh, is governed by the <clears throat> the uh, fineness of GGBS and the glass content and uh, the glass content can be uh, found out in a third party laboratory if you need to give and then uh, the uh, quickly when the material reaches your site, you can find out the fineness. The most uh, quickest uh, test is uh, 45 microns passing test actually. The 45 microns test when you do for GGBS, it should not be more than 20% retention on 45 microns. So that is the quickest test uh, that you can do. And uh, of course you can do, uh, you know, 50-50 uh, blending actually. You have uh, in India uh, only uh, class is not defined. In other countries, there are classes where they talk about efficiency of GGBS. Like if it is exactly performing like cement, it is 100% class 100. And then uh, if it is at 80% uh, level, it is uh, class 80. And then class 120 is another uh, uh, class of uh, GGBS. But we have only one class mentioned here in India. Uh, to check all this, uh, the quickest test, as I mentioned, is a 45 microns uh, uh, fineness test. Yes, madam. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, now, the next question is asked by uh, Praveen Nigam. And the question is, there are different types of uh, RMC concrete providers and their rate differences are more. So in this case, how can we ensure the quality of concrete? Once again, once again, madam, once again. Uh, sir, there are, there are different type of RMC concrete providers and their rate differences are more. So in such a case, how can we ensure the quality of concrete? So <clears throat> yeah, very, very important point uh, to notice, uh, you know, uh, in a Redimix company, uh, the... Uh, Benchmark is whether they have uh, a good quality team and uh, whether the quality team has uh, people on board uh, with good qualification, required qualification, or they have a good engineering team uh, in, the, in the 
quality department and uh, most importantly are they following all the norms as per is 4926 uh, like uh, you have three pillars of uh, qqc in uh, in uh, redimix concrete uh, company which is uh, forward control which is control of all the activities and uh, materials before uh, it comes into uh, production stage and uh, immediate activity immediate control which is set of all activities which uh, comes at the point of production and then the retrospective control this is uh, the set of all activities and controls that are executed after the production is done so we need to check whether the company is company is making all these principal aspects are they taking care of all these aspects that is the first uh, interview or audit that you have to do actually and uh, rate is uh, certainly uh, should be a secondary point actually if you take uh, rate as a primary point actually so many times uh, you will be uh, the person will be compromising on the on the quality of concrete and uh, uh, uh that is the that is the point so you need to check uh, uh, and have a audit of the aerodynamics company in full actually yes thank you uh thank you sir next question is uh, what is the price of icrete and where is it manufactured the question is asked by dr gurunathan kamalanathan tell me once again sir what is the price of icrete and where is it manufactured the question is asked by dr gurunathan kamalanathan uh, mm, uh we we uh, the, there is a company you know amescrete uh, india private limited i am also involved in that company and uh, and <clears throat> the price and all we'll talk later uh, means you can send a mail to me uh, thank you uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, the next question is in way batch method, what is the way to reduce the cement content? The question is asked by Arun Raj. Once again, madam, sorry. Once again, sorry. Tell me, madam. Uh, in way batch method, what is the way to reduce cement content? <clears throat> So uh, whether it is volume batching or way batching, whatever the method is, uh, the you know you have the mixed design actually. You have to do the mixed design. So uh, only way is to do the mixed design. First you do the mixed design as per IS or any method. You have different systems. Uh, you can follow any method. Uh, but ultimately, since we are in India, you have to be uh, making this as per the Indian standards. Once you make the uh, once you make uh, the first mix. Uh, and take the trial you you observe the seven days and 28 days strength and uh, if the strength is more then you can go on uh, optimizing the mix actually that is the only way actually so there is no the y batching is a only a method actually of weighing the different uh, uh, elements of concrete or different ingredients of concrete uh, it has nothing to do with reduction of cement actually uh, it is only by trials and error uh that you move to optimized uh, mix contents or reduce reduce cement contents okay madam uh, thank, uh, thank you sir uh now the next question is uh it is observed that more shrinkage cracks are found where, wherever fry ash is used and can you explain the reasons for this now uh <clears throat> you know uh Fly ash alone as a material does not cause uh, concrete to shrink actually. It is the total mix design that we need to look into actually. Many times uh, what happens is, uh, you know, the aggregate content and sand content, if it is more, if the aggregate content is less and the mix design is faulty, then it may lead to uh, uh, shrinkage. But on the other hand, uh, if you look at the plastic shrinkage cracks, actually, if, I'm, if you're talking about plastic shrinkage cracks, the plastic shrinkage cracks happen because of external factors like the temperature, wind velocity, and uh, humidity. Uh, if the temperature is more, it will take out the water, bleeding water, which comes out of the body of concrete. And uh, if the water escapes at the when the concrete is setting 
there is no way uh, something will fill and tracks will appear. These are called plastic shrinkage tracks. So this appears, these cracks will occur whether you are having OPC or PFA or any material, if the proper curing methods are not employed and proper concreting practices are not employed, if the water cement ratio is not controlled, the design is uh, not properly done, but generally more to do with more to do with outside the uh, outside factors like i mentioned the temperature and uh, uh, wind velocity and uh, the humidity and if the curing is not taken care the shrinkage uh, will be appearing more but uh, it is you cannot attribute this to uh, the uh, fly ash uh, because uh, you know fly ash quantity as i as i said i, I showed the pictures actually there are uh, Mm, more additions, high volume fly ash concretes are done throughout the world, high volume GGBS concretes, so where 70% GGBS, 30% OPC is blended and used. Uh, I have uh, myself uh, was QAQC manager in a very you know hot climate like Oman, where 5 lakh cubic meters we finished, uh, uh, 5 lakh cubic meters we did with 70% GGBS, 30% OPC. So uh, these uh, supplementary cementitious metals, whether it is fly ash or GGBS, they on their own will not cause this uh, uh, drain shrinkage and cracks more. Uh, the other factors have to be taken into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, now the next question is, how to ensure compatibility of various human sources and admixtures of different ones? And the question is asked by MP Nair. Uh, <clears throat> compatibility is uh, you know uh, whether a particular cement uh, will work okay for us means whether it will give the proper slump as desired and designed whether it gives sets uh, properly and then whether it gives proper 7 day 28 day strength so these are the three factors main factor is the slump retention whether the slump retention is okay or not with uh, a combination of cement or cementitious system with the admixture and then the setting is okay or not these are the two major components to decide whether the compatibility is uh, there or not so this is only based on uh, trial and error method only you have uh, innumerable combinations actually in india you have uh, so many uh, fly ash uh, suppliers ggbs suppliers and uh, so many brands of cements so uh, it is very difficult at lab level to decide uh, the compatibility and all, even though you have some uh, <clears throat> small laboratory tests actually, but uh, major, uh, you have to do trials on site, trials on lab uh, to check this one actually. And uh, it is not certain that once you do the compatibility test, uh, it doesn't mean that uh, it will hold good for complete uh, one year or two years. Uh, the cement characteristics can change or GGBS or fly ash uh, characteristics can change or any other other ingredients can change. So compatible admixture and compatibility with one admixture at a particular time can change after some time actually. So you only thing is uh, you go on observing and doing trials and uh, you observe on site. There is no um, shortcut uh, for this actually. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, now, the next question is asked by Shankar Muralidhar. And the question is, additives in form of GGBS and fly ash is provided, which is a better alternative? <clears throat> uh, you know, uh, let us say uh, you are, you are uh, at this moment, let us say you are uh, sitting in Chennai, actually. Chennai, you have a... Uh, Chennai has a thermal power plant very close to Chennai, okay, which is about uh, Ennur, which is about 50 or 60 kilometers from Chennai. So if fly ash is available uh, at a very short distance, actually, so you need not have to go for GGPS. Okay, so it is the availability of the local uh, materials uh, at a shorter distance. Uh, but uh, the point is higher grades, uh, uh, I prefer personally GGPS because GGBS is a factory made product and a consistent product actually, and you can at least ask somebody uh, what has happened if there is any variation actually. But here in India, what has happened, what happens is 
flash is uh, uh, generally unclassified flash what uh, most of the remix companies use actually uh, means it is a absolute waste for a thermal power plant it is just picked up from uh, a supplier brings and gives back and gives to a remix company so uh, variations can occur actually so lower grades uh, uh, say m30 m35 uh, up to m40 probably is is okay uh, fly ash if you have uh, a good uh, data and uh, consistent uh, results you have already achieved during the trial phase if you have made it actually it is better to go for fly ash and higher grades and uh, important concretes uh, like uh, scc and all very sensitive uh, concretes you will go for uh, ggps so it is only a choice actually uh, like for example you you don't have uh, ggps in a certain place let us say you have to transport ggps from 2000 kilometers or 1000 kilometers it makes no sense actually okay <clears throat> on the other hand on the other hand uh, you have uh, uh, some good advantages of using ggps so uh, like uh, you know you can use the ggps up to 70% in case of a raft foundation and things like that so availability quality of fly ash and quality of ggps available to you and what grade of concrete you are doing uh, these things will determine and another most important point you can see is uh, you know uh, high rise pumping if it is a high rise pumping um, fly ash is preferred actually okay because ggps is not preferred in that case as a classical example burj khalifa Uh, the tallest building is constructed with opc plus fly ash and uh, micro silica most of the uh, highest uh, pumping is done with uh, uh, this combination actually so ggbs sometimes uh, may give uh, pumping problems uh, but so these are all general statements actually you cannot say uh, like this only it will happen or something like that okay it is a combination of cement how it is reacting with fly ash how it is uh, reacting with ggbs but if you ask me straight question i will say you have to use from the uh, from the um, sustainability uh, point of view if it, if it, if a material is closely available uh, let us say your uh, site is very close to fly ash uh, source you have to go for fly ash on the other hand if you have cheaply available ggbs to you you go for that and uh, you have to also see your uh, applications applications and the grade of concrete uh, those kind of things so it is a complete approach we cannot off and say you use this or that okay sir thank you uh, thank you sir uh, now thank the you. next question is uh, which admixture increases the workability of concrete mix and that was asked by mr pavitran parameshwaram <coughs> A, a chemical admixture a super plasticizer uh, or even a plasticizer okay uh, any of these uh, chemical admixture will increase the uh, increase the uh, slump or workability um, there are uh, admixtures uh, like uh, type a and type b type a and type b are uh, you know uh, sorry astm c494 uh, <clears throat> type a is a uh, is a uh, just uh, um, <clears throat> uh, plasticizer type b is a uh, <clears throat> retarder so type c is a accelerator type d is plasticizer arm retarder so like this if you are uh, having a simple uh, plasticizer uh, means it will just uh, give you uh, the <clears throat> if it is a retarder so let's say you have uh, type b admixture it is just a retarder it will not increase this slump okay so type a admixture which is a plasticizer gives a slump in increase super plasticizer uh, which is type f and type g gives uh, increase in slump and uh, you have this uh, type f and g Uh, all are also done with uh, either snf based admixture or pc based admixture so these admixtures will enhance the workability uh, at the same water cement ratio means uh, you take a mix and just start this admixture you will get the workability more uh, workability actually so <clears throat> if uh, you have any uh, 
particular additional question you can infer to me actually this uh, particular question yes so a chemical admixture uh, basically uh, by definition is a material which is added up to maximum of 5% by weight of cement uh, or cementitious metal which can increase uh, which, which uh, the strength which can increase the workability and which can uh, change the cohesion and pumpability and uh, many other properties both in fresh and or hardened state so most of the times both the uh, fresh state and hardened states are affected uh, or um, changed in some times only there is a change in fresh state and there is no much effect on the hardened state so uh, the, most of the chemical admixtures that are currently used by ready mix companies are giving better slump better slump retention i hope uh, i have answered actually uh, if there is any further question on that that particular admixture let uh, the person uh, write to me yes uh, thank you sir uh, the next question is what is the met best method of acc mix design to achieve target strength and that was asked by yamuna bagat <coughs> best scc scc yes sir yes sir the uh, best uh, see I, i will give a very simple answer because it cannot be explained on this kind of a webinar scc mix uh, just follow the is standard now and also ef narc uh, ef narc specifications fnar specifications is the first fundamental document they released on uh, scc it has uh, it gives broadly how the mix design has to be done and uh, it gives guidelines actually and most importantly scc is by experience uh, it comes by experience and you should have a, a very good uh, um, pc based admixture the selection of pc based admixture which is the engine for making uh, uh, an scc uh, the, because all your properties uh, whether you take uh, l box test uh, flow test or you, you know, youtube test or v funnel test or anything everything is uh, governed by not only your mix design but the pc based admixture that you are using so you have very advanced uh, pc based admixture nowadays you select this one your half of the job is done and the other uh, half of the job you can refer the efnrc specifications also you can refer indian code of course indian code is a means you can say uh, you, they have based it on if not specifications thank you uh, thank you sir yes sir, we are done with the questions okay thank you madam uh, thank you sir <clears throat> i thank all the participants uh, uh, who have attended and asked the questions thank you thank you hello yes sir Yes, Kaushika sir. sir. Yes, sir. Um, shall I? Uh, yes, sir. Start with yes, the word of thanks. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Uh, once again, uh, uh, thank you so much, uh, Kaushika sir, for a wonderful and uh, very elaborative uh, 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 talk on the subject of uh, concrete uh, and uh, especially ready mix concrete and. Uh, on behalf of uh, indian concrete institute would like to uh, uh, thank you very much for uh, the uh, wonderful uh, lecture thank you so much sir and uh, at the same time i would like to thank all the participants who, who made it possible uh, to join us uh, in the uh, this uh, day on uh, the uh, uh, the series that is a lecture series 42 once again thank each and every one for joining uh, this session thank you so much thank you sir thank you thank you most yes Thanks a lot once again from Cucrit uh, Remix uh, India Private Limited uh, for all the viewers who have come and uh, patiently heard this lecture.
thanks a lot once again and i thank also my md mr shali fernandes and uh, we would uh, we'll keep meeting on this kind of webinars uh, trying to build uh, some awareness and uh, trying to exchange some of our experience thanks a lot once again i'm kaushik uh, from kyocrete thank you very much